ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وإنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة هم يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين يا الله أسبت آدري Thank you very much. Your Excellency Muhammad Buhari Jisefar, President, Commander in Chief, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency Professor Yemi Oshibanjo, SAN, GCON. Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, my brother, Right Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Femi Bajaba Mila, Principal Officers of the Senate and the House of Representatives, very distinguished senators and honorable members of the House of Representatives, Excellencies. Executive Governors here present, Mr. Boss Mustafa, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, Chief of Staff to the President, members of the Federal Executive Council present, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Engineer Ahmed Amshi, Chairman National Assembly Service Commission, and his commissioners. Architect Ojo Emos, Clerk to the National Assembly, Clerk Senate and Class, Clerk House of Representatives, Head of Security Agencies present, Head of Federal Agencies and Parastatals, very distinguished invited guests, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. President, on behalf of my colleagues, very distinguished senators, and honor members of the National House of Representatives, I welcome you and your entry to the second joint session of the Ninth National Assembly for the presentation of the 2021 budget estimates. A year ago, Tuesday, 8th of October 2019, to be precise, when we presented the 2020 budget estimates in the first joint session of the Ninth National Assembly, we promise you and Nigerians our readiness and determination to consider and pass the budget before the end of the year. We consider that necessary in order to reverse the irregular and unpredictable budget cycle that had impacted adversely on our economy over the years to the more desirable January-December cycle. Your Excellency, members of the National Assembly work assiduously to process the budget estimates within the time frame we set for ourselves. I must commend the members of the National Assembly for this sense of dedication to duty and patriotism. The eventual passage of the Appropriation Bill 2020 and signing into law in record time was a clear testimony of the benefits of the legislature and the executive working together for the good of the people of this country. Mr. President, the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted our plans as it shut down economies and affected our income and expenditure projections. This effect on the global oil market, which is central to our revenue outlay, was devastating. It necessitated a review of the entire budget, which we did with a profound sense of purpose, duty, and patriotism. In reviewing the budget, we made necessary reductions, reordered priorities, and changed sources of funds and loans given the grim realities from the pandemic. We are convinced that the steps we took went a long way in stabilizing our economy and in ensuring that funds were provided for critical programs of government. Mr. President, as we are about to begin another fiscal plan, we shall be influenced by the desire to consolidate on our gains coming from the hard lessons of the pandemic and on the urgency of sustaining our diversification programs, not only because of the unpredictable nature of our revenue 
but because of recent uncertainties arising from the coronavirus. The National Assembly is again ready to pass the 2021 budget before the end of the year, by the grace of God. This will continue to enable planning and enhance productivity and efficiency in the management and application of our resources. We can all bear witness to the celebrous effects of the early passage of the budget on our economy. Mr. President, the implementation of the 2020 budget has shown a remarkable improvement over the previous years. Certainly, the injection of funds for the various programs and projects had helped our economy. We expect that before the end of this fiscal year, the 2020 budget would have been implemented 100%. This will be a historic feat. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic is a global affliction that every country needs to address through various measures. The National Assembly approved the Nigerian Economic Sustainability Plan, a plan of the federal government to address the economic challenges of today. All efforts should be made to implement the plan as a number of schemes are designed to keep our micro, small, and medium enterprises afloat. Mr. President, it is our hope that the 2021 budget will be targeted as consolidation of gains made by the 2020 budget. The 2020 budget was targeted as sustaining growth and jobs. We need to not only protect jobs, but create more. The COVID-19 pandemic has revealed the ultimate vulnerability of our economy as a monolithic oil dependent economy. The sudden crash in the price of crude in the world market and the consequent impact on our economy should spur us into genuine search for the diversification of our economy for other revenue sources. Mr. President, as our revenues plummeted, we have resorted to borrowing to fund the development of some critical infrastructure. Our revenue generation, collection, and remittances need to be critically examined. Recent interactions between our committees on finance and national planning and economic matters with over 200 revenue generating and collecting agencies have revealed so much inefficiencies in their systems. It was revealed that government loses so much money as a result. Similarly, there are so much leakages of monies that could have easily been available for national development. Due to inadequate revenue, government has to borrow in order to finance its projects. It is equally important, therefore, that we diversify our sources of funding of our programs and projects. We need to encourage and promote more private sector participation in developing some of our physical infrastructure. We could explore the public-private partnership, build operate transfer, and many other funding options. This is with a view to reducing our level of borrowing. Mr. President, let me once again assure you of the readiness of distinguished senators and honor members of the 9th National Assembly to work on the 2021 20 budget estimates. In the exercise of this very important constitutional function, we will be thorough in our scrutiny. On this note, it is my pleasure and privilege to invite His Excellency, Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federation, President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, to present the 2021 20 budget estimates